let's move on because we want to talk about uh, the different ways in which grassroots sports are being treated at the moment when it comes to level three point whatever we're in um, and uh, I'm delighted to say we've got two people heavily involved in the, the game at grassroots level in particular this is football we're talking about Daniel English is a coach and director of football at Corduff FC and Derek Collins is the secretary of the Midlands Schoolboys and Schoolgirls League uh, Derek we're going to start with you we spotted your uh, letter in Leash today last week uh, rather than me rehash it your, your piece of the paper it was a public letter that you were publishing what was in the letter and why did you feel the need to publish it? Well basically it's due to our stakeholders, which would be all parents, uh, coaches, managers, secretary, etc., being very frustrated that since um, in the background of this, our league started in September. At the end of September, we had to stop due to being moved into level five, which was grand. And we understand the health problems there. But with the new restrictions moving to level three or 2.5, uh, we have now roughly got nine, ten weeks of constant training, which in clubs, it's very hard to keep young kids doing the same thing. They, most of them would uh, train twice a week. So after a couple of weeks, numbers started to drop off. Clubs got concerned. Um, so basically, it was secretaries ringing myself saying, do you know what's happening? When will we get back playing? If this we come to level three or level two, will we get blamed back to matches? Then with the bombshell of the level three and no matches still, but you could still train. It, numbers are just completely dropping off. You need games, essentially. That's what you want. Yeah, well, it's it started off a level five when we had this famous word elite. Uh, players could play and to give you an example if you have a twin boy say under 14 one could be an elite player the word elite is not a word I like using because it should be an emerging player or whoever the, the FEI or the sports bodies or the government decided to bring in this word one player could go out and play where the other looks out the window his brother going out to play there should be no difference. If the players can play, they can play. If they can play, they can play. It's the grey area of not knowing what you can do. Like football or soccer, as I have to kind of say it down in the Midlands, because there's another sport called football. We tend to, it's a team game. It's not like you can just go out and do personal training. Everything is, is, is set up for the team sport. And it's very frustrating that way, on it. Daniel English, you've um, again written a letter. This is to all your local representatives in Dublin 15. Is that right? Yeah, I am um, basically seen Derek's letter last week, and um, I felt that all the clubs had to do something about it. I think until we start making noise about it and actually writing to these politicians and getting on to them, that I don't think anything will be done. Um, I wrote all letters to them now today. We're putting on our court off social media. Because I just think it's gone on way too long now. We keep saying we have a plan to live with COVID and we're learning to live with it, but we're not. Every time it go and gets tougher, the cases go up. It's just shut down shop. Like we have kids that haven't played really in nine months. They've played two games. They're coming training. The the coaches they've nothing to react to um, games wise. They've nothing to proactively look forward to games wise, and they're just training for the sake of it. Then even with like senior football, our seniors in court for lockdown for six weeks. And I just don't really get the whole thought process, letting kids play and then not letting seniors play. And like this, I think if the schools are back open, the kids should be playing football. Like I've before I done them letters, I done my research. I spoke to principals and schools. I spoke to teachers, um, and I asked them. I said, "What's the process in PE?" And they do stay in their pods, but they play indoor games. They play outdoor. They're playing football, GEA, whatever they're playing, and then they meet up in these after-school clubs, and the pods are mixed. So it really doesn't make sense how the government are letting the schools go ahead and continue as a normal MPE, but then football is getting punished. Um, like we have like kids between the under age of 8 and 13, that's their massive development cycle, and we have kids that haven't completed a season in pro properly in two years, but they changed the calendar of football and they changed back, and then obviously with COVID. Um, so I think I think the TDs start need to stand up and start earning their votes and be counted for I know I've seen a couple of them in a doll, maybe one or two, bring up points about getting us back. But are they really doing anything? Like, are they really going around to the local clubs and seeing what we need to get back? Because 
all I've seen is in Cardiff especially, we've invested loads in the signage, um, appointed COVID officers and took it really seriously. And yet then um, we're not trusted to have games or let the kids actually go out and play games on the weekend. So it just really doesn't make sense. And then like I was in a shopping center on Sunday at my partner and the shopping center is packed. There's hundreds of people walking around. There's loads of kids hanging around together. You walk by public parks, they're playing football together. And they all keep saying if it's outdoors, it, you're not as high risk of getting the virus. Like So I don't really understand why we're actually not allowed to play football. I think it's very tough. And I think the effects that it's actually having long term on coaches, parents, players is not actually really accounted for. And I think it's time that all the clubs stand up, come together and actually say we're not standing for it anymore because they do need to change it. Daniel, in terms of um, taking a look at what's going on in other sports, so over the summer, obviously, there was um, club championship matches that we were televised in uh, Gaelic football and, and hurling, and you know that was a really good thing for those communities. Um, and yet, not that much seems to have changed from summer to now, but we can't have kids playing. And you make the point that kids can play uh, in school together. And then, obviously, we're seeing that the minor and under-20 inter-county championships are going to be resumed uh, this weekend in Gaelic Games. When you saw that, what did you think? I just thought it's absolutely ridiculous. I think, like, it's either you do what New Zealand done and you lock it down fully, completely suppress the virus, or you learn to live with it. And I don't think we're doing it properly over here. I think it's either all the sports are shut down as one, and everything is shut down, or sports are allowed to continue. Um, it doesn't make sense. They don't take in, Everyone talks about mental health with the kids, which is very true. They don't talk about the risk of kids getting obese or putting on weight or whatever it is. And um, when they're not playing, they need to be out training. They need to be socialising. We. I actually had two mothers that text me the other day in the club that the kid is really suffering since lockdown. He's came back and trained twice, and they haven't been able to get him back to the club since because they're only new to football. They're trying to get used to it, but then they're training and there's no games or anything for them to look forward to. So they're just getting frustrated. And I think now all the clubs really need to come together, put their points across, write to their local TDs and um, ask for, like, because they don't actually have valid explanations for us not playing. The cases are going to go up on in Christmas. The pubs are open. You can go for a point with your mates. If you want to go to the cinema on a Saturday or the shopping centre, the government say, yeah, work ahead. You want to do that, go ahead. But no, you can't play football and you can't have non-contact training. Like, it just does not make sense. And it's, it is getting very frustrating now. And I like kind of stayed quiet on it. And then I looked at Derek's um, letter that was very well addressed. And it just got me thinking that all the clubs need to do something about this because um, it's just, I think it's a shambles now. I don't think it's been handled very well. I do understand that like, I have family members that are high risk, one or two of them. And I'm always very responsible around them. But even they're getting frustrated now. And it's just not of benefit to anyone. Um, so yeah. I think this, it's time for serious change. Derek, what was your take when you saw that um, the inter-county GA underage season was resuming? It's, again, I have another letter gone out this morning and there's kind of, there's a couple of questions that nobody kind of has addressed. We've been told why uh, we can't, we've been just told they can't play, but why can we not play matches? Like, what is the science behind the reasons matches can't be played? Um who made the decision on it? Is it we don't know whether is the FEI pushing it? Is it the health boards? Is it NEFA? Is it the sports council? Like who is who and why? Kind of what is the science behind that? If somebody can play football, whether it be other sports or in a team game, whether it's Gaelic, whether it's basketball, whatever it is, everybody should. Like there's no saying. It, it kind of comes back down to the argument pubs have over you can go to a pub if you can buy a meal, but you can't go to a pub because you're spreading it. Everybody's together. We have to remember these are young kids from eight years of age, some younger, up to 16. After a game, they're not all getting into cars and saying, we meet you down the local, let's go down the town now, everybody go together. They're being picked up by their parents and brought home, or brought shopping, or brought into a swimming pool, which, again, is indoors. It's a swimming pool, it's a confined area, and it's in a pool. Like, it doesn't, there's no sense behind why you can't play matches. It's, it's, you can, it's the inconsistency for you that, that it seems to be the most annoying part here. Is that right? Yeah, like, if it's a health risk, it's a health risk. We don't want to put any kids in 
any way, like we, the majority of the kids, everybody, you have to protect every kid, every boy and every girl. So if it's a health reason, it's a health reason for kids as well as adults, no matter what sport you're playing. It, it makes no sense behind it at all. I just done a bit of research last night and uh, we came across a study online that was done in San Diego and they've done a complete paper on it. And they've, there was 6,500 players, 263 coaches from six different soccer clubs. And they've done everything on it and basically the outcome of this study is that there is no uh, playing kids, soccer for kids or football for kids in an outdoor environment in the proper manner. There's no risk to transmit a COVID or it's a very minimal risk. Like when kids go in school, they're sitting in a classroom with their coats on where all the wind is open. So running around outdoors it just, just doesn't make sense whatsoever. Derek, um, you represent a league. You've got five different counties there at the moment, so you can give us a pretty um, broad stroke on this. In terms of the potential damage that can be done to clubs currently and you know, the potential for kids having an absolute lack of interest and in maybe dropping out of football if there's no league resume soon? Oh, 100%. Uh, 100%, because it, like, it's like everything. It's like you for the more adults, like... If you're out playing for a football match and you're, you're training, you're going up twice a week because you want your place on a Saturday or a Sunday, whatever day you play football. If you know for one week you've no match or idle, you're kind of going to get a little twinge in your knee, say on a Thursday, or I won't phone up, I just say I'm injured and I'll be back again the following Tuesday and I'll be all right for the following match the next week. Kids, it's grand. It started off as grand. They were back training. It was a new thing for us because everything was closed down. But after nine weeks, the numbers of in, in clubs, in people, they're driving kids back to their Xboxes or the Playstations. Because we being a kind of winter league, it's not that you're going out training, it could be raining, you've no use of dressing rooms, kids are getting wet, they're getting back into Mammy and Daddy's car, they're catching colds, you catch a cold and parents think, oh, I better get you tested just in case you caught something. Like, it just doesn't, the whole thing of it doesn't make sense. And numbers are dwindling from clubs. They're, they're, just, they're still members of a club, but they're not turning up. They're not participating in it. Um, health wise, it will be down the road uh, a big eye opener for our parents because you'll, you won't get Johnny or Mary out of the house because they're now talking to their kids. The fellas that they only meet for an hour and a half on a football pitch. They're now talking to them through their headsets, through their games, etc. It, it, it'll really do significant damage to sports uh, and to young adults playing the game. Daniel, are you seeing a similar experience with the children in Cordoff? Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think as well. Like I, I was talking to my uncle, who's involved in Kerry in a club. He's a secretary down there, and they're looking to know now as well. Is because they they're a county which is heavily supported with GAA and a lot of the kids play GAA. As soon as it comes back to January, February and the GAA season kicks off, they're not they're worried that they'll actually be not even able to finish their league. They're trying to get it done by January, February, March if we're able to go back. And I don't really think the government have taught it through. Um I suppose we're lucky enough in Cordoff we're not as as affected with other sports. Generally the majority of them will play and the football or um, you might have someone that play GAA as well. But down where Derek is in Leash or Kerry, it's a lot more difficult for them because they're under pressure with the guy training and the players, and it's a lot for the parents to have to do to bring them to both training. So I think they really need to start thinking about that. Um, and I'm just kind of wondering now, as a club, we've put all our precautions in place, got our COVID officer. Um, like, if we didn't do that, there would have been serious consequences on the mental and physical aspect for the kids. And I know from dealing with the HSC from when we we had a kid that got COVID, not in the club, actually outside the club, and um, he trained basically a week before. He were lucky enough he wasn't actually there. But I'd rang and obviously went through all the precautions. And I was actually told, or asked by them, who do I think is a close contact to the kid? Now, I'd be presuming all his team will be, but I never got asked for contact tracing lists. I never got asked for anything. They just said, oh, if anything pops up, let us know. And I just think if we don't have that side of a fix, if we're not following these cases up properly, we're going to be in this for a long time. And I think it's about time that they either start and they start making a proper plan 
to actually live with COVID or they may just shut up shop because as it stands, we're not. It's two stop start. The kids' um, development is going to be seriously affected. Coaches will end up quitting, which we've seen in some clubs. They've just thrown in the towel and it's because they're fed up. Um, we just like, for example, 20 courses, 20 coaches on a course through the night. They've done it on Zoom and in fairness, it was very, very well run by the FEI, but they're missing out on that experience as well of actually getting on the coaching ladder, getting the excitement of going out on the pitch, coaching kids and uh, learning. And I think they really need to start thinking about that. And is the risk actually that high yeah. if the kids are out on the pitch? Because they always say it's 15 minutes or more close contact um, to be at risk of catching COVID. Like when you ever watch a training session or a football match when a player is standing beside someone for 15 minutes, it doesn't happen. Yeah, look, the, all the research from the very early days, even World Rugby found that um, multiple scrums would be mostly okay. And we haven't seen that many cases of transmission from on-field stuff. And it goes back to the question that was raised. Uh, one of my mates got in, in touch and said, this is really frustrating because the kids are in school all day and yeah. they're sitting beside each other and then they can't go out and play a match even though they can train fundamentally what's the difference between training and matches now there's obviously some stuff about parents bringing kids to matches and maybe sharing cars and all that kind of stuff we could ask if we could get that somewhere around that or you could play local derbies so it's walking distance or cycling distance there's, there was a way to be uh, scientific about this and to be sophisticated about it but we've decided with a blunt instrument that's the only way to do it. and I think you raised a good point about uh, living with it like it doesn't really look like the policy is to live with this at all. The policy is to wait it out until the vaccine arrives, hope that the vaccine works, and then forget about it. That seems to be the official, the semi-unofficial government policy. Uh, and in the meantime, the games aren't going ahead. So look, lads, we're, we've... Chair, we've... sorry, just one final point on that. Um, we, we have to remember, like, so far there hasn't been in all of Ireland any document case of a, a transmitted uh, case or from the football field. Also, if you go back to an international match there recently, one of the players played a match who had COVID, uh, played a full 90 minutes, uh, was seen hugging a teammate from his own, from the opposition, who was actually a club player, and yet he didn't transmit it to anybody whatsoever. So there hasn't been one case in this uh, that has been documented or given to us, this is the reason why. Yeah. Look, um, we've raised it. We'll we'll follow up on it. We'll see where your letter to your local TDs ends up going, Daniel. And I understand, Derek, you've uh, published another letter today. So my thanks to both Derek Collins, who's the secretary of the Midland Schoolboys League, and to Daniel English, director of football at Cordoff Football Club, for talking to us on OTB AM this morning.